Hello, everybody. Good eve. Good day. Good morn. It's me, Stefan Satani, from a Comedy Advice podcast, welcoming you in with open arms. And they are just waiting to embrace you and hold you tight for this next 45 minutes of this wonderful podcast with very special guest, Ben Glebe, an incredible comedian. We talk about some of his works, including his special that debuted on Showtime and is on Amazon Prime. We also talked about Idiot Test, one of my favorite game shows, and it's on the Game Show Network and also Pluto TV, I believe it's streaming. It used to be on Netflix where I found it. He was just on a recent Disney Plus episode of Just Beyond, and he did a fantastic job. We also got to talk a little bit about his life, and wow, I went really high there. We also got to talk. <clears throat> we also we talked a little bit about his life, and it's pretty incredible that and he used to have a speech impediment. And he was very nervous to talk in front of people. And we talk a little bit about how perception and the change of perception can actually change your life. And that happened to him in several ways. So it was really cool to talk about him and learn about him. And so you'll be in for a treat is what I'm saying. This oven is about to open and I'm about to shove your head in in a great way. It's not going to get burned, maybe a little singed around the haters, but you're going to get smack dab like face right in that apple pie and you're just going to just slurp it up. It's so good. And you know what else is going to be good? If you go see him live at the House of Comedy this weekend, he's going to be there. Link is going to be in the show notes where they always are. That's right. I'm like your Nana. I'm always welcoming you home with the huge bushel of show notes that you can just gobble up. And while you're in the show notes, I am going to be doing another show at the House of Comedy on December 14th. I will be there at the new Trash or Treasure show, episode four. So come on over. We're going to debate which topics we think are trash, treasure. We need the audience to help decide. The last three shows have been phenomenal. And I can't thank everybody enough for coming out. Because if you guys don't come out, then we don't have shows. So really appreciate you guys and appreciate Lamar Mitchell JR, my co-host. Give him a follow. If you haven't yet, that'll be in the show notes as well. Why not? I'm just going to keep packing on those show notes. Mm, it's going to be like cheese on a panini. Just so much provolone, mozzarella. Mm, you're going to be so bloated by the time that you indulge in all these show notes, but it's going to be good. It's going to be worth it because grandma Steph always supplies with uh, truth and never lies. So I hope you guys are doing well, by the way, if you aren't, please let, let me know. And I'll give you a little virtual hug. I'll give you one of those little emojis that looks like he's trying to grab for mama's bazoongas, but he's actually, I think it's a hug, right? So I'm going to give you that one and just know it is the hug. Okay. It's nothing creepy, you know? So uh, I'm all pure. I'm a Puritan. I don't know if the Puritans were that pure, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pure old Steph, okay? And pure is the name and sanitized episodes of the game. So this one is squeaky clean. It's not going to give you any germs except for that wicked virus of laughter. Giggles, guffaws, all sorts of chortles. So be ready for that because it is going to attack and it's going to attack aggressively, all right? Other than that, if you guys haven't followed me yet, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Stefan Satani and a comedy advice podcast youtube subscribe leave a review if you guys haven't yet just hit your thumb against those stars and it'll take my podcast all the way to mars i don't know why am i rhyming today i've really got the dr seuss bug well not the racist part just the red fish blue fish thing mm, was that a symbolism for racism i'm not sure oh, the grinch part that's what I've got. Bah humbug. All right, guys. I think I'm ready for the episode. Are you guys? I think so. Let's dive into it. Kerplunk. What's going on, <laughs> Steph? Hey, how's it going, Ben? Fantastic. How are you? Good. Feeling very alive, especially after seeing that wonderful... Way to rub it uh, in. Way to rub it in. <laughs> Hopefully you don't have a bone to pick with me anymore. I don't have any bones. I'm completely transparent. Would you like a, a hot intro? Would you like a cold open? How how would you prefer it, Ben? I like it hot and cold. That's the way I prefer my food, my women, my surfaces that I sit on. <laughs> you know what? I'm feeling that food metaphor got me into a hot pastrami 
thought, so I'm going to give you a hot pastrami intro. I mean, I wish you didn't say that. I had a pastrami sandwich the other day for the first time in a long time, and I regretted it about an hour later. I didn't feel I didn't feel pastramified. It was delicious. And would I do it again? Yes. But I won't do it again, and I might. <laughs> You know what I mean? I, I actually do know what you mean. Because I think that some, I haven't had a pastrami sandwich in a long time, probably since I lived in New York. Don't tell that to the del to the local delis. Oh, yeah, that's very true. I mean, the it's, Ben, the Phoenix pastrami is something to brag about, let me say. Mm. They burn it every time, but it does rise from the ashes. <laughs> the flavors fly into your mouth. Ka, ka. Well, I don't know. Those are the two words you want to say after I explain my pastrami sandwich situation to you. That's a good point. I feel like pastramis are kind of like threesomes where they're better in fantasy, but logistically it's kind of a nightmare because then afterwards you feel awkward. You just I mean, regret Definitely it. still worth it. I, I understand the analogy, but definitely <laughs> still worth it. I'll take a little awkwardness any day for a couple pieces of challah bread outside some meat. And I don't even understand what I mean by that. No. Well, I think we've got a whole podcast episode to figure it out. And okay. on this lovely podcast, a comedy advice podcast with your host, Stefan Satani, joining me for all of you guys that just blindly clicked on an episode or maybe clicked shuffle or didn't read the cover. Joining me today, a very special guest, Ben Glebe, snap, snap, snaps, clap, clap, claps, and a big pastrami welcome. I mean, I appreciate that a great deal. Uh, that meets a lot to me. <laughs> well, Bready or not, we're going to get into this episode. <laughs> and, Perfect. And what what a fun one it will be. And Ben, I have to say, I am honored to have you on the pod. And I, I, uh, I also wanted to just tell you that I was a huge fan of yours in the first, I can remember the day that I first became a Glebian and started Ooh. to get into your work. And yeah. it was... New Year's Eve, 2018. Oh, 2017, because it <laughs> turned 18. But um, I was on Netflix, and my wife and her friend were getting ready for New Year's uh, for our party. And my the other friend and me were watching Netflix, and I saw Idiot Test. And I ended up binging, and this goes to show how long it takes my wife to get ready, three <laughs> or four seasons of Idiot Test. Wow, thank you, love that. Oh, and it was fantastic. And for all of you guys that don't know what Idiot Test is that are listening, it's kind of a mind teaser game show where instead of, and I I, I heard you, so I'm stealing this from you, but Please. I heard you say this on another interview where you were saying that a lot of game shows, they're really testing your memory, it's trivia and seeing what you might know, but idiot test is actually making you think more critically and um, bringing you these tests where you're not just th testing what you know or what you remember, but you're starting to think, okay, what is this problem and what's the solution to this? Which I thought was so cool. Thank you so much for that, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're really proud of, of that fact of what we did with the show is that it really is one of the few shows on television that makes you think, and that includes the news. Um <laughs> You know, it it uh we, we we really tried to do that. There was this one really touching moment I had at the airport going through security. The guy that checks your ID at TSA said he liked the show, and I was like, "Thank you so much." And he he got really emotional, and he said, "I don't think you understand. I've had two strokes, and your show is the only one I've I can find that challenges my brain and helps me um, test my my brain and strengthen my brain and." That meant a lot to me. So I gave him, let's just say, 67 strokes backstage. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, I would even say I... That he had a job to do and he was not on break. So I just said thank you, really. But you know, <laughs> I do appreciate Sometimes. my fans. That's all I'm saying. I do appreciate my fans. Sometimes those uh, those intangible strokes are the best. And it really is a great show. And um, I think it's still, st they're streaming the episodes on the Game Show Network. And, yep. um, and on Pluto TV. And, and on Pluto TV. And you were, you were not just the host, but you were also the executive producer and head writer, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. I was one of the EPs and I was the head writer. That is correct. How did you get into this show because i know that you had also hosted a number of shows or like guest hosted on um game show network shows did they think of you specifically for this one because it seemed like you were a perfect fit that's nice of you thank you man i yeah they they had put me on their air a few times over the years i was hosting such 
glorious shows that will forever live in television history like Dog Park Superstars 2. And <laughs> and uh, A Mind of a Man was a cool show though, hosted by D. Ray Davis. I mean, Dog Park Superstars was cool too, but I mean, it didn't really you know right. win any Emmys. It did win uh, the Barky for Worst Television Special Involving Dogs, and that's not even an award show or an award. Um, I believe I ended the special howling, but somehow this impressed Game Show Network <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's not a joke. At the end of the show, I'm literally howling as the jib goes into the air in this dog park. And they told me that they wanted to find a show for me, and I thought it was Hollywood BS. And then, lo and behold, they called and offered me... Uh, they initially said they wanted me to host it and wanted me to host a run-through in a conference room to see how it worked. And I said yes, yeah. and, I for, and I forgot that I said yes. And I booked a trip to New York for a rare vacation, and then I remembered I'd said yes, and I was like, oh man, should I, in the middle of this six-day trip, come back to L.A. and do this run-through? And I decided to do it, and I came back for 12 hours after two middle seats and no sleep, and just rocked that conference room. And from the conference room, they picked up 40 episodes, um, didn't even do a pilot, never did a pilot. So I also have never done a pilot on account of the fact that you know, I'm more into flight attendants, but <laughs> that's just me. Oh, uh, hey, it, it can get a little turbulent with, uh, with no pilots. doubt, no doubt. But we're going down and we've lost our main engine. Don't worry, we're bringing around a fresh bag of peanuts. <laughs> what a way to wing it! And, uh, I I also right. have to add, going back to, because I know you had also said in some other interviews that you would have, it's it's so astonishing to see what an excellent job you do at hosting, what an excellent job you do at stand-up comedy. I mean, uh, Neurotic Gangster, which Showtime, on, sh uh, I'm sorry, premiered on Showtime, is now yep. available at Amazon Prime and for yep. free on YouTube, yep. uh, was an absolutely excellent piece of work. And... I actually, I might just land the plane right there and talk about that for a quick second because I've, I've had a lot of comedians on the podcast and I always try and, and dissect their work a little bit. And I feel like you have these great twists and turns on these jokes where you always try, I feel, when you're joke writing to write for a twist or a surprise for the audience. But I feel like you are just leading everybody in and then you just have this drastic turn that just leaves me floored and I, I didn't really see it coming and just on the intro of the special where you were talking about the time and asking somebody about what time it was and, and they tell you it's 40 past the hour and you're like not only does that not help me but that person specifically made it so that I had they Not withheld the right information. information. They withheld information. It's really a strange move, and I'm simply trying to get catch this train, you know. And and right. I don't know what right. hour they're referring to. Just tell me the full time. They had to think it's forty. They had to think it's five forty, and then think I'm going to withhold the hour and just tell them it's forty past the hour. And I'm not trying to talk to the Riddler on the way to Gotham. You understand? I'm trying to catch a train. <laughs> and I'm not even trying to catch a train. That's even the worst part. And you know who didn't see it coming, by the way, also, was that flight attendant. Are there any other questions? I am coming to Phoenix, to the House of Comedy, for my incredible stand-up comedy, by the way, November 18th through 21st. I know it's early in the podcast to do plugs, but also sometimes people don't stay around the whole episode, and I need to get that out. I want them to come out. House of Comedy, 18 through 21. And then, but well, let's go back to talking about how great my special was. I didn't mean to interrupt that. I want that to continue as long as possible. No, no, ben no that's not. BenGlebe.com for tickets. It's a great place to get tickets. <laughs> my merch is available there. You were saying, though, about how great my twists and turns are. You're damn right. You should see my pubic hair. I mean, you shouldn't. But it's, it's, <laughs> I'm just saying it's got a lot of turns as well. It's curly. I, I, listen, you, you asked. You asked. And you delivered. And Did you ever tell you look like Benedict Cumberbatch? I've actually... Not only have I gotten that, back when I was working in New York... A, a gentleman brought his kid to work. I don't even know if it was bring your kid to work day. And he told him that I was Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> Did that work? Well, the kid was a disbelief at first. And he was like, you look 
your hair's different. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why, but I went with it and I was like, well, I'm dying it for work. Yeah, I have a specific role. So he ended up getting a pic. The, the dad wanted me to take a picture with him and his kid. And so we took the picture. And so I'm thinking there's a picture somewhere on his fridge of the kid and somebody that is not Benedict Cumberbatch. I have a series of questions for you. Did you do a British accent? <laughs> I did. Okay, that's I did. good to know. That's no. good to know. Otherwise, it's far, really hard to pull off a, a Cumberbatch. I did it. I didn't do a good one, but oh, I did. Jesus Christ. Christ. I don't even know if you're a human <laughs> being right now. I mean, you just went, oh my God. That's Benedict Pumpkin Patch, my friend. <laughs> oh, man. You grew up in a field. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay. Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm going to go and dig this grave right here. <laughs> what? Do you even know who this person is? Tony Stark. You can't do that. Yeah, oh I don't. God. Uh, You've you scarred know. this kid for life. This, I, I did. I think I scarred myself too. You scarred I scarred him so wish. bad. That picture is on, a, is, is, is on a fridge magnet in the foster home because his parents now gave him up. They can't have him living at home anymore. You really did a number on this kid. Maybe a dialect coach would be helpful at some point. Or <laughs> I feel that it might, because I, I was able to succeed in making the British accent not sound sexy. In fact, quite the opposite. But I mean, that's not true if you happen to get your rocks off by dudes that specialize in digging holes. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you, you know what I'm saying. Oh, oh, indeed. But I, yeah, anyway, thank you for the compliment and going back to the genius of your special and delivering, about time. which about time, my God. you, you will be delivering at the house of comedy, November 18th through the 21st link is going to be in the show notes too, for all of you that are just like, Oh no, I forgot where to go. It's going to be right there in the show notes. Thank goodness. Um, but I, one of the questions that I wanted to ask too, is you've done all these different pieces of work that are fantastic and i also i was watching some clips and was listening to how you were talking about you did a prank or helped do a prank with david beckham mm -hmm. and not with david beckham but doing a prank on david beckham yep. and mm, that sounds like a euphemism for something yeah nasty. we weren't on top of him physically <laughs> but but uh um, i didn't bend it like beckham if that's what you're getting at what are your <laughs> yeah. question exactly how far did Beckham bend is what I was wondering. How As far as needed. I do what James Corden tells me. <laughs> <laughs> and he ended up, for those who hadn't listened to it, um, he, there was a statue that was going to go out in his honor of him. And it did not look anything like him. It looked horrible. And you played a part where you were supposed to annoy him. And yes. you, you were calling him and he likes to be called David and not Dave. And you were calling him Dave. And he was like, there was one line, you did it perfectly, where he was like, you can call me Dave if you want, but I like to be called David. And you were like, okay, great, yeah. Dave. I said, David is, David is. Da David is. And and then the, there was another, there was another, I think it was behind enemy team lines wrong. for you. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You're shifting topics, got ahead, go, go ahead. And, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, just. Uh, <clears throat> no, lateral okay. over here but 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 i didn't um, see that point be... you coming but go ahead yep please yep <laughs> but I, what i'm thinking about is i know that you had had a um from four to about 22 some issues with speaking and i know that you were very nervous to be able to you didn't even like to be called on in class and you, you were very afraid to speak and now it feels like you are also in the position of stand-up comedy is something that you constantly need to be speaking and you're constantly asking for, um, what's the right word? Well, laughter. So appro approval in a kind of sense. And then you're also putting yourself in positions where in the case of David Beckham, in the case of uh, Behind Enemy Lines, where you would go um, and and dress up as the opposing teams or the rivals mascot or make fun of the team in whatever city you were in. And people did not take kindly to it. And this is a long way to lead to a question of how, how did you kind of 360 in, in terms of being so shy and, and you had trouble speaking to a point where you're able to speak and be funny in situations where 
Sometimes people can get angry. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. You've done your research very darn well as well. Henry, I, I, please stop barking on account of I'm doing a podcast, and this makes me look less than professional. I'm going to get the gun, Henry, please. Henry, stop it. Oh, no. We've talked about this. No, he likes to play with the gun. That's, that calms him down. I'll get the gun if you quiet down, Henry. You want to play with your gun? I'll load it, buddy. Cat's like- <laughs> My cats like the switchblades, so I, I get that. Know. I get that. You know, I, I I used to have a pet raccoon that liked nunchucks, and let me just say, things ended up. You, you, you had shredded walls, and it was a good time for nobody. But first of all, I don't I don't ask uh, for laughter. That's a very amateur move as a comedian. I never say, "Could you guys laugh? Do you mind?" <laughs> I don't. I don't. That, if a comedian's asking for laughter, you really it's not. They're not. It's not going well. But. Uh, how did I overcome the speech problem and shift it? I just, I don't know. I just always had a performer's mind. I knew that I would be a comedian when I grew up. If I could solve this problem, I always saw the world in funny ways. And so I also knew that my speech problem was psychological more than it was physical for me. I mean, there's something in my Mm -hmm. brain that twists my, or locks up my vocal cords. It still happens to me once in a blue, but, um, I just, I just flipped the way that I saw things um, I flipped the way that I saw speaking in public from being people in its greatest fear and my greatest fear to being something that really doesn't matter. There's the stakes are far lower than you think, you know, where it's a, it's a real self-importance to think that what you say matters that much. And I let go of that. And when you take a step further back and realize that, you know, what you're saying, you're one of 8 billion people on earth. And if you think that what you're saying matters more than what the other 8 billion people are saying, you're ridiculous and your ego's out of control. And then if you think not only what you're saying, but how you're saying it matters, the pauses, the intonation of the 1 in 8 billion people, people are like, whoa, 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 whole planet, grind to a halt. Let's see if this guy's delivering his words well. Most people have low expectations. They're barely paying attention if they're listening to you at all. If they do, they want to get a simple message from it or a joke or a laugh. They're not looking for Martin Luther King Jr. up there to live soaring oratory. And you take a step further back and realize we're literally a speck in a vast and noble universe floating out of control. And if you still are nervous when you speak, you're really doing a number on yourself that is unnecessary and it's inaccurate. And so all those realizations just help me unwind that. And so now I can go into the craziest situations in the world and speak generally without any issues, whether it's you know, in front of world leaders messing with Obama and McCain and Hillary and Bill Clinton, or whether it's messing with David Beckham or, or, um, <laughs> or you know, whoever it might be, I, or acting on sets where it's, you know, multi-million dollars on the line and you don't want to waste people's time or you go live on television to millions of time or in front of stand-up arenas or places like the incredible, very comfortable, delicious food having House of Comedy where I'll be November 18th through 21st. It just... Uh, doesn't matter. Thank you very much. You, uh, you just, uh, you just relax and do what you're there to do. I'm just playing a role like anybody else. It's no more important than the fry cook in the back or the people that have their regular jobs and come to you for a moment of break. It's entertainment and it's, and it's there just to serve a role like all of us. We're all just kind of cogs in the machine trying to keep the engine moving, you know? Yeah, that's beautiful. And one other thing, and and I know that before the podcast, I had said, yeah, this is a silly podcast, but I just wanted to say one kind of serious thing, and then we can get into the the, the advice and the questions. Um, You had said this on an interview where you were saying that you had, you were with this speech therapist, and they had asked you to read something, and you had read it, and then they had asked you what it meant, like, what did you read? And you said, I I can't remember, I was focusing on the delivery and how Mm -hmm. perfect I wanted to be and that that kind of give you gave you a little epiphany of exactly what you just elaborated on and I to me that really resonated with me because I feel that in a lot of cases I'm a perfectionist and I like if I'm writing jokes I want them to be perfect if I'm um you know pleasing my wife I want those dishes to be squeaky clean when I wash them and you know sometimes That's not how you do sex by the way <laughs> you don't do them on a dish we call no. it the pastrami sandwich That's how you try to please your wife no not at all dude no no it has to take place in the bedroom bring the dishes to the bedroom wash them there uh we do, we do the paper plates on the bedroom because we we don't like to well, that's reuse. very bad very bad for the environment every time you 
have sex and Angel gets an unrecyclable bill delivered right to heaven. And I think you know that. <laughs> I, I see some of the angels sometimes that have those the six pack plastic around their necks. Yep. And it's because of it's because of our disposable sex. And it's that's just because they love dolphins. and They want them as close as possible. That that's very true. That's very true. And you know, I heard that actually studies came out that you can save angels and free them of that constricting plastic if you go see Ben Glebe at the House of Comedy, November eighteenth to the twenty first, in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm not going to say that's true or not, but I will say that God agrees with you, and <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. You 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 make up your own mind. I. I, th I think it might be in scripture somewhere. Um, the book of John 18 through 21, uh, yep. the house of comedy. That's correct. So, anyway. That's exactly correct. Well done on that. So you were, you were saying, you were saying about perfection and joke writing and things. You were getting to a serious question. I've, I've just completely distracted you from that. I'm really sorry. Oh, Go ahead that's and, that. You've got my full that's... seriousness. So just whatever. It's okay. I was, <laughs> I'm listening. Uh, what for? For all of those audio listeners, we we did a little monkeying around here. Ben has. I, I don't know how you do that, Ben. It's magic, but I love how it. I do. How and I do what? The, the the there was a monkey face. The way that I'm saying it that makes it sound you, like I'm making fun of your. face. You ever think about not doing acid before a podcast? Or <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I I'm barely it. listening. I'm barely listening to you. <laughs> Now I feel like I'm pulling at straw berries. But I get that. I do get that. Thank you. I'm glad we're bearing That's some hot. fruit. That's hot. <laughs> you know, I was I was plating for that question, but I don't even remember what it was. Maybe it was just a compliment of how I've seen you be able to <sighs> use your perception to shape reality or shift reality like in that instance and then some something random but i'd heard you talking about how we feel cold and it's our body's response to the outside and so it's like an alarm saying eventually you could die but right now you're okay and how you were talking about focusing on the inside of your body which is a meaty 98.6 degrees and the blood inside you which is this thick liquid that's also hot that, that yes this is how warm. you conquer being cold i don't know if you set that up properly but yes that is correct have you listened to every podcast i've ever done in my life this is incredible <laughs> i i put them on while i sleep and while my wife and i have sex on plates so she i'm still working on pleasing I my love wife. that it's that's... like a greek restaurant in there i understand <laughs> you're gonna break a couple dishes the only way to make an omelet they say in greek restaurants but um, yeah, that's how I conquer being cold. I haven't been cold ever since that realization went on mushrooms in Amsterdam many years ago, but it applies even when not on mushrooms. It's just, you can control your body temperature. You got warm liquid inside you. If you were sitting in a, in a 98 degree hot tub in the snow, you wouldn't be cold. And that liquid is in, is outside of your skin. The 98 degree blood is inside of your skin, coursing through your veins, not even sitting there. You can just tap into that and feel that and realize you got that inside of your system and you're not going to be cold. You know, beautiful. And I, I mean, know, it doesn't work uh, on my girlfriend. She's gotten better, actually, but not great. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I wanted to try it with my wife because she is always cold all the time. So I'm not sure. The only place I she doesn't that. really feel cold is when we go to the House of Comedy, usually November 18th to the 21st, because they have the temperature just right. So. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, they really do have a great temperature control in that room. And some of the best audiences I've ever had, some of the best looking audiences, I actually uh, have video for you of what my last audience there looked like. And my God, was that a good looking crowd. I mean, just imagine. <laughs> imagine a crowd this handsome and pretty at the same time. Like an army of angels. Oh, that's correct. Man. That's correct. So yep. Good. I think I see one of them with a with a plastic six pack around their neck, but well, that's just because he loves to do three Stooges act outs with a dolphin and a sea turtle and just hang out and 
an endangered species corner of the ocean and just wait until God calls them back up for angel duty. I think you know that part of it. Oh, yes, that's very true. It's, it's the angel's fault, really. That's I, right. I do appreciate that. Thank well, you. I, I feel like since we're up in the heavens or giving advice to the heavens, I feel like we can give advice. The great, to... the, the great beyond, just beyond, some might say. What? Oh, my gosh. What a beautiful, beautiful transition to a wonderful piece of work that you have also done in the acting realm, where on oh, Disney Plus... Uh, I recently enjoyed you acting alongside, uh, oh my God, I don't know any of the other names of the actors, but you did a great job as a ghost. Lexi Underwood, Kate Baldwin, Jackson Geach, Emily Marie Palmer, great folks. Directed by Mark Webb. Uh, I guess you don't like the movie 500 Days of Summer. He directed that and Spider-Man. So, you know, I mean, whatever. What was your question again? Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> How was it working with all those folks? <laughs> Amazing. I mean, really, some of the greatest people I've worked with. It's really, it was really, really fun. And the role is my favorite role I've ever, I've ever gotten to do in my life. Yeah, it, it was really a, good. And you did. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I, I played a 1930s silent film star who died in a fire. Now is a ghost, and you don't get something that meaty typically. So that was really fun. It was really, really fun. And and you know, I made the poster for the series. It's called Just Beyond. My episode is called. Um, it's, it's an anthology series. It's all different storylines. And mine is called We've Got Spirits. Yes, we do. I'm only one of two actors that made the poster. And uh, you've, it's just to finally get respect like that. And then to see, you know, and then they have a huge Hollywood premiere for it. And I learn about it on Instagram because they forgot to invite me. So there's lots of wonderful moments. Beautiful. It's almost like you were a ghost. In They literally life. did not invite me to the premiere. It's oh. wild. Oh no! Oh no! But maybe they uh, mostly focused on the kids in the cast. I don't know. Oh man! Oh, those darn kids. Well, Ben, we're gonna go out and. Do you think you could put in a good word with me, uh, for me, for for, with the people at Disney Plus to invite me to the next party they throw? Um, as Benedict Pumpkin Patch, I feel like I could um. Go through the pumpkin vine and see. I feel like you're more Benedict Cucumber Stash. Like you got them under your desk. You know what I mean? (laughs) <laughs> I, do, I do have quite a few cumbers, and it is cumbersome, but I make do. Well, eventually you'll end up in a really, you'll end up in kind of a pickle, to be honest with you, if you wait long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does sound like a sour ending, but it, mm-hmm. what, what a delicious time. And I know we might be in a bit of a time crunch, but I well think done. we can wind down with some questions and give some advice. Does that sure, I've got some back? spear time. Oh my gosh. Oh, no. They, like they do no call me the, deal. they do call me the ponderful wizard of ha I don't know if you know that or not. <laughs> this is my play zone right here, Ben. I feel like I'm just in the ball pit with you and we're having a great time because puns, that's, that's my area. And I you, mean, look, obviously, I, I enjoy a pun, but you don't need to refer to being in a ball pit with me. I feel like you could have used less graphic, <laughs> less graphic imagery, hopefully, in the future. You know what I mean? But I do get your point, Stefan. It's like we're just in a pit of pastrami right now, just swimming That's, around. Yeah, I'll be your pastrami mommy, brother. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, we've got some questions from Reddit that I'm hoping we can answer. Oh, great. Are you ready, Ben? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, I've, got... I've been ready. I've, I've been ready since right now when you asked. <laughs> Perfect. All right. This first question is from the Reddit advice column. It says, how do I change my shitting schedule? I'm absolutely Your shitting tired schedule? of feeling... shitting schedule. Is that what you said? Or you say shaving schedule? No, no shitting schedule. Oh, you did? Okay. Wow. <laughs> um, it says, I'm absolutely tired of feeling the need to shit during the moment at school while not being able to do it before heading out or even before going to sleep the night before. This is incredibly important. How do I change? It's unbearable. That's an easy answer. And I would have not have had an answer for you two months ago, but um, because I was just stuck in whatever God gave me. It was a nightly schedule for me. And and then Mm -hmm. uh, I recommend this highly. Go to Mexico and get very sick with some kind of intestinal problem for weeks on end and it 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 changes it just resets you it gives you a chance to be to, to define you in a new way and now I'm a morning guy which is much worse for me because 
uh, I wake up late and I'm already late for what I got to do. And then all of a sudden, oh, good. Now there's, now I need to ask them if they don't mind pushing the meeting 20 minutes. So Mexico is the move. Oh, lovely. So if you say lovely? maybe, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. No, but I, oh, I missed opportunity. I feel so did when you went to Mexico, it switched from night to day. That's correct. Or night to morning. After a very painful two week transition period, but yeah. Mm, I'm wondering if you just keep going to Mexico and it'll shift it every eight hours and then you can finally get it to the right time where you want to. To. I don't know that you have to wonder. Don't dream it, do it. Exactly. Beautiful. All right. Well, we're not going to stand stool on that question. I feel like we nailed it. So we're going to go to the last question, Ben. And this one is... Oh, question number two. I... Question number two. Oh, man. I should have made that question number two. See, if I was, in... if I was a good host, that's how it would have gone down. But... You're a, you're, you're a great host. Much like oh, I was for whatever I got in Mexico. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, question number two here is, how do I make $20,000 fast, like overnight? My boyfriend told me today that we are massively behind on rent, like $20,000, and we will be kicked out of our apartment tomorrow if we do not pay what we owe. I had no idea we were behind on rent. Apparently, he's been gambling our rent money. I had no idea. I'm obviously going to leave him, but I'm worried this will leave a massive stain on my credit history. Does anyone have any ideas of how I should handle the situation? Or how I can make money really fast. Has this whole podcast been kind of a sting to set me up for a prostitution solicitation? Because I'm in, and <laughs> and even though this is being recorded and broadcast, this person sounds desperate but also attractive. Desperate, horny, and attractive. And those are the three <laughs> adjectives that have always gotten my motor running. And so, uh, I don't know, just send them over to the House of Comedy where I will have sex with every 15th audience member, especially those who are in need of rent. It might not seem like the 20 bucks up front is worth it when you, when you need money and don't want to be spending money, but think of the chance that one in every 15 people gets $20,000 cash for attending my show and maybe even a night of sweet, sweet, uh, you know, like dish sex or whatever it is. I don't know how you guys do it in Phoenix. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to learn. I'm keeping my ears open, my nose to the grindstone. I think we use the fine china in Phoenix for the for the special events, like you at the House of Comedy, the 18th to the 21st. So yeah. dish sex. I get that. I get that for sure. And listen, you're welcome to the shows, even if you are from fine china or wherever it is. We aren't holding it against you the whole, the whole, uh, you know, the whole pandemic. No one knows. Maybe we're responsible for a lab leak at this point. It's hard to know. So right now, until we get this thing figured out, come on, hang out. It'll, it'll be great. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Well, Ben, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you no, wait, so no, much for joining. Can't, how could it be the end? We barely started. Oh, man, I feel like, well, we've eaten all that's on the plate, and so it's time to finish. And I can thank you. Wait, well, but, I guess I can. Wait, but before you thank me, can I actually do something very annoying? And even though we've... Uh, no, please. You you, you, uh, you know, forced me to plug my date so many times throughout the podcast, but I would love to say something for those of you who are not in Arizona and can't come yes. on the 18th through 21st. Um, I do hope that all of you follow me at Ben Glebe. I'm very active on Instagram. I'm very active on Twitter, YouTube at B Glebe. And I hope you subscribe to my podcast, Last Week on Earth, or I summarize what happened during during the last week on Earth, but I have celebrity guests join me as well, doing it for 11 years. It's on Kevin Smith's Modcast Network. It's really fun. Subscribe wherever you get the podcasts. And I do a virtual live comedy show, so you can see me live anywhere in the world, wherever uh, you are, you can get a ticket and join us on Zoom. We produce these beautiful comedy shows over Zoom, and it's a full night out, a full comedy club experience. Like I, I and I do a show every Saturday called Glebe Off the Top: Crowd Work and Improvised Madness, and it's a whole community. My fans are the Mad Ones. The the, the shows are both a sh comedy show and a town meeting of the Mad Ones Town Council. We elect a mayor every few shows, and they do all this fun stuff. And it's a whole community on Facebook. And I do them solo sometimes, but I have special guests like 
Greg Proops and and uh, Jamie Kennedy and Adam Ray, Leah Lamar, Justine Marino, Jade Catapreta. I know some of them have been guests on your show. Um, and uh, some really wonderful people. I'm so sorry. That's probably a celebrity calling me right now to be on my show. Hey, hey, so sorry. Right now I'm just, I'm just wrapping up Stefan's podcast. But yeah, sure you can do it. Listen, Bobby, I know you're not an improv guy, but you're one of the greatest actors of all time. So I'm fine with that. We'll just riff it. And so Bobby De Niro is going to be there soon. I don't like to name drop, but um, it's really fun. And we do it every Saturday. And they're really, really fun shows with VIP meet and greets afterwards. And you can get a ticket at my website, bengleeb.com or nowherecomedyclub.com. And uh, they're super fun. I also do a monthly, every month or two, live two-man improv show with Greg Proops called It's a G Thing, Greg and Gleeb. It's basically a two-man whose line is it anyway. That's really fun. Also at Nowhere on Zoom tickets on my website and I'm coming in person for my Descent Into Madness tour not just to Phoenix but also to Dallas and Vancouver and like at the moment that's probably it because I'm doing these other things I just mentioned I don't know why you're judging me the tour the tour has come to an end oh man well <laughs> the next question I was going to ask you is what have you got to plug where can people follow you what have you got oh I'm, I'm not awesome. here to plug anything dude I just wanted to come <laughs> and hang out I just wanted to come and hang out, so not. A, I don't have anything to say for that. If you want to see where, what my plugs are, go to bengleeb.com, and you can just figure it out yourself. Oh, beautiful, which is going to be in the show notes as well. So you can just take your cute little thumbs, and you can just smash them against the screen. And Even if you got weird fat thumbs. thumbs, let's not be, be thumb exclusionary. True. I feel like we should... Not be thumbist, yeah. That's correct. I yeah, I mean, some people have a fat thumb, and... They should probably just stop worrying about that. Don't put your thumb on the scale. Just that's right. Live. That's right. Who are we to point thumbs at you? No. No. One. When you when you point fingers at somebody else, you know what happens? You got your thumbs tucked inside your fists at the same time, pointing at nobody. Yeah. That's, if, that's, if that's, that's the way you point, point. <laughs> it depends if that's your your pointing style or not. In Arizona, we're more cowboyish, so when we point fingers, the thumbs are up like little revolvers. So it's well, I, 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 I no get better. that because sometimes you have to ask your your neighbors for their papers, even though they're have every much as right to live and be happy as you. I get that. You guys do it your own way. Um, scorpion life, you know what I mean? That's right. That's the most gangster animal of all because it's just it is. Mm. It is. But, but did you know that if you put a black light, you can see them a lot better at night? Oh, yes. Yes. That's why we don't have any black lights in our house. Because we've seen YouTube videos of people that just put them on and in their house, they just see them crawling all over the place. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's the only place fun. that I haven't seen them crawl is House of Comedy. Uh, so That's crazy. That's... Yeah. And they actually, they're, they're, they're sweeping the place on the 17th of November. So... You're gonna be scorpion free from the 18th through 21st, guaranteed. The comics coming after there. It's a it's a real crapshoot. You never know. Houseofcomedy.net for tickets for all the other comics. Yeah, I don't want to just plug my own my own shows, even though that's mostly my focus. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Don't want it to sting the other comics. Beautiful. Never. That was the episode. Thank you so much for listening all the way through. You guys are angels of from the heavens just the heavens and by heavens i mean portland scottsdale uh, austin texas these are all celestial places not new york new york you guys are a bunch of demons but i love you anyway you demonic fucks well wow, so aggressive sorry that was a little bit of new york demon inside of me hey i'm walking here wow more demon let me just exercise that out with a little bit of scorpion sauce but while I do that, you guys, I just want to say thank you. If you haven't yet, please follow, subscribe, leave a review. And uh, if you guys have any questions, email me or DM me. And what else? Follow Ben, support him, watch his specials, listen to his podcast, see him live in Phoenix at the House of Comedy this weekend. And take care of yourself. Be good, okay? Be swell. All right, here we come. Big old gooch smooch. Mwah. Bye-bye.